Have you ever noticed economics around you? Have you found examples of economics in your life? Have you experienced economics in your life, in your family life, in the society around you, in the state, in the country in which you live, or even globally? There are ample examples of economics around you. So let's first understand point by point what economics is for an individual, economics for a family, economics for a country, and economics for a world. Let's start with economics for an individual. Let's understand what is the dilemma that an individual faces. The money that he has is limited, but he has unlimited wants. He has many wants. If I give you hundred rupees, what will you do from those hundred rupees? You may go for a movie. or you may want to go to ice cream parlor and have a scoop of ice cream you may also want to go shopping or let's say it's your friend's birthday would you like to gift your friend for him for his birthday you may also want to recharge your internet or your mobile but you only have a single 100 rupees note now the problem creeps in you have to make a choice either to go for a movie or to go to the ice cream parlor and have an ice cream or to go shopping with your friend or to get your phone recharged now it entirely depends on you which choice you go with but the choice you go with is the is what remains and the other choices have to be cut out so this is how you balance your limited resources that is money and your multiple unlimited wants now let's take a look at economics surrounding a family how does a family get affected by economics does it really experience economics or economics is something that concerns only a nation or a or the world a family also has its monthly income that monthly income is limited but if you go see there are many expenses that a family needs to do a family might need to expend on a tv they might want to purchase a new tv the tv the tv has gone old it's not clear it shows snow so it might want to purchase a new tv or the summer is coming up it may feel a need to purchase a ac it's getting hot so ac would be more appropriate it may also want to go for the holiday exam season over so now it may want to go for a holiday this is a good way of binding your family or it may want to go for a different choice altogether it may want to save now it entirely depends on the family if it wants to go for a tv or for the ac or it may want to go for a holiday or it may want to save the entire amount now whatever choice it makes it has to cut down on the other expenses the other expenses get ruled out so this is how a family balances its unlimited wants and limited resources again it's striking a balance between resources and wants now let's take a look at economics surrounding a state how does a state get affected by economics like a family like an individual a state also has many expenses to deal with it may want to do the irrigation facilities get infrastructure facilities for agriculture it may also want to build run a good transport system or it may want to give uh, its people good roads to travel good roads to get transported or it may alternatively expand on various services like police services your traffic uh, police services or the bureaucrats or government officials that you have who give you services now state has lot many expenses to deal with now again it has to make choices because the budget it gets from the center and the incomes that it generates from its masses masses of the state 
is limited but the expenses are way beyond the incomes and the budget allocated to them again it have it has to make choices it can either go for irrigational facilities it can go for transportation facilities or it may try to build roads give a good network of roads to its public or it may give a better services like police services traffic police services and other bureaucratic services same way like an individual like a family state also has to manage its expenses and its incomes this is nothing but economics for the state does a country need to balance its wants and resources does a country have limited resources does a country have unlimited wants unlimited expenses let's see a country needs to expend on defense these days there are border issues with many countries take russia and ukraine for example take india and pakistan india and china for example take china and japan for example as far as water territories are concerned so what this thing is doing is it is making countries expend more on defense so that they can protect their territory when the opponent is invading subsidies subsidies another more another example where a country expends a lot especially a developing country like india a developing country like india has to expend a lot on subsidies on gas on fuels on petrol on lpg on cng whatever natural gases fuels it is supplying you it has to supply on subsidized states it gives you subsidies it is one of the biggest expenditures in the budget this is also one of the most important expenditures most important aspect of the budget allocation infrastructure development gone are the times when infrastructure was only roads and railways bridges airports now infrastructure also includes logistic facilities it also includes telecom it also includes education these are the backbone of a developing economy if economy has to develop it has to concentrate on developing its infrastructure if it does not develop it in its infrastructure it probably can't grow so this is also one of the most important aspects where a country has to focus healthcare you might think healthcare is a personal choice you may want to go to a good doctor to a specialized doctor or you may want to go to a general physician if you are ill but healthcare from a national point of view is of national importance it is the duty of the government to give its people a good healthcare system good hygiene good medicines good hospitals these are the responsibilities of the government government has to look into the matters of medicine it has to provide good hospitals wherein you get good uh, medical facilities treatment facilities at cheaper rates government has to look into the matters of giving you good hygiene all the sewage system is correct there are no blockages which creates uh, diseases like uh, cholera gondos and also chicken dinner so a government may want to a government may want to expend more on its defense more on its subsidies infrastructure facilities or may purely want to concentrate on healthcare depending upon what is lacking in the country so this is how a nation tries to deal with the economic problems of more on and less resources now let's take a look at how the scenario is at at the global level what are the issues that the globe is facing now global warming or global warming this is one of the more important issues that the globe is facing now 
we are finding that the temperatures are rising year on year. The ice may melt, say in about 50-60 years from now, it has already started melting. This leads to the danger of the cities getting submerged in water. The cities that are close to the coast getting submerged in the water. So this is one of the important concerns of Globna. One of the very important problems that the world is facing. Power generation. There are many countries and many villages and cities in those countries in the world that are facing power shortage. They do not have power even for two hours. Many countries in Africa, many countries in Asia. The total power that is being supplied today is not even 30% of what it requires. So this is also a problem that the world is facing. Because if there won't be power, there will be no industries, people won't be able to live as they want. They won't be able to use electronic uh, items, electronics. They won't be able to get light. They won't be able to... Actually, in today's time, if you do not have electricity, you won't be able to survive. So, this is also an important issue. Drying up of oil fields. Most of the oil fields are drying up. The fuel is getting depleted. In Gulf, in Arabic nations, these wells are drying up. There will be a problem with the world if they dry up. We do not have alternative power generation resources. Animals are getting extinct. The world is trying to save animals. The tigers, the pandas, they are getting extinct. We as humans, we as mankind do not want animals to get extinct. But the fact of the matter is, they are actually getting extinct. The world is trying to fight this issue. Population explosion. On one hand, there is no power, there is no fuel. Animals are getting extinct, and on the other hand, there is a problem of population explosion. This is a serious problem that the world is facing. The population in the world is growing at a rate of 5%. Every year, it grows by 5%. If today the population is 100, next year it will be 105. But today, it is in billions. Just imagine the number of people that will grow by next year. But the land is limited. Where do we accommodate them? How do we get them employment? This is a very grave problem that the world is facing. This is a very grave problem that the world is facing and trying to fight out. Terrorism. Terrorism is also a very serious issue that the world is facing. It's a very grave problem. The countries are spending lakhs and crores of dollars every year to fight terrorism, to fight the terrorists. Terrorists are attacking various uh, places of worship, various places of uh, work, various places of gathering. And they try to harm people and try to injure the property. This is also a very grave problem. Now, if we look at these problems from a global point of view, Again, the problem with money. The globe as a whole does not have enough money to fight with all the problems at the same time. So, it has to again make choices where to expend money, where to expend uh, the human resource. So it has to again make a priority and balance it, balance its limited wants, balance its Unlimited wants, that is the problems, and limited resources, that is the manpower and money. If we take a look at individual level, at family level, at state level, at country level, and at the globe level, we find that at individual level and family level, we can do away with wants. We can cut on our wants. But the nation, the state, or the globe cannot ignore its problems. 
so what it does is it tries to expand equally or tries to distribute its resources on all the wants so what happens is either it cannot justify the problem and it goes on lingering or the quality gets hurt the quality does not get maintained so this completes our topic economics around you there we see the examples of economics in our life